Hey guys, so a while ago I did a video about anxiety and kind of like some of the common behaviors that go along with anxiety. Um, and today I kind of wanted to talk more about that and do the replacement behavior video that I was planning on doing to kind of go along with the anxiety video that I was filming before. So just so that you guys can see this. Okay, so as you guys could see, my thumbs and like these two fingers <laughs> usually get the most bit. I don't know. <laughs> They're the ones that I go for the most. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I've been doing it so long, the skin's tougher on these, and these ones actually hurt pretty bad when I do it. So. I still bite all of them, just left often. Less often <laughs> so sorry if that was disgusting but that's literally what it's like like I see something and I'm like I need to bite that I need to pick at it this is anxiety producing obviously whatever it's not a big deal so I don't know I kind of watched back my other video and I was like gosh I feel like I sound like I'm coming off as like anxiety's like oh I don't have anxiety but that's not what I was trying to say I was just trying to say that to qualify with a diagnosis for anxiety it has to cause like some severe problems in your life basically and all I was saying is that I don't have severe problems in my life due to anxiety but I still have anxiety you know what I mean I just don't have anxiety disorder so I'm sorry if that came off wrong and weird and offended anybody. I didn't mean to do that. It just is the way that I said it because I was trying to explain something and I'm not good at explaining things. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, but th that's what my fingers look like and I've been under a tremendous amount of stress so it's been way worse. Um, just bleeding constantly and like you guys can't see it but there's like layers layers and layers of the rips that I'm digging into and ripping out and it just is horrible but I can't get my camera to focus that well so whatever so I wanted to talk about basically like replacing the behavior of biting of hair pulling um, and like picking things um, recently at work, I did a, um, kind of out of the box, Mary Poppins pull out it out of your bag intervention with one of my kiddos where we, um, painted something that was basically what you do is you just take like a laminating sheet, you put it through the laminator so it's already laminated and then you paint over top of it. You're supposed to be able to pick that off if you're a picker type of person. Um, for me, it didn't work because the sound oh gosh I already have goosebumps the sound of the paint like when you pick it oh and the feeling of the paint it's like such a sensory thing it's almost like scratching on a chalkboard or oh gosh like even the chalk oh like ugh, the chalk on the chalkboard no I just can't do it unless it's one of those really green ones I can do that but that's what it felt like and sounded like to me and I was like nope this is not a replacement behavior for me maybe if it was like puffy paint where it was easy to like actually peel it off I like the feeling I guess of like peeling like when you peel your nail polish off not when you just scrape it off I don't like that Blech. so um but it you know just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it wouldn't work for someone else like my kiddo really enjoyed it and um I think it's you know helping in the long run so some people might enjoy doing that if you have the time and you can create something and you can stick it in your desk at work and pull it out on your desk and pick at it when you have a chance great um I actually was in class also the other day and this we were talking about our research papers that we were doing and presenting and this girl presented on teletrichomania which is um, a whole separate disorder of hair pulling so that can be caused the hair pulling disorder can be caused from depression anxiety um, or something as simple as being bored <laughs> I bite when I'm bored sometimes basically what this girl did was that she went to counseling and she they they tried a lot of different things with her they um I wrote it down let me go grab the paper so they did a lot of things with this girl um including deep breathing 
like teaching her how to deep breathe because it's not as easy as you think it is. Um, PMR, which is progressive muscle relaxation. That's one of my favorite things. I can teach you guys that sometime or maybe in this video. I don't care. Um, journaling. And the journaling is where it gets really interesting. So they had this girl, like when you hair pull, when you pick your hair out, any place, it's almost like biting. Like I just bite my skin and I get rid of it. That's it. Gone. Don't have to think about it. Same thing with hair pulling. You're going to pull your hair out and you're just going to let it go. Right? Wrong. They made this girl keep either a pile or tally every strand of hair she pulled out of her head. So it wasn't just gone. It was visible to her. She could see what she was doing. She could see it. Not just like going in the mirror and seeing patches in her hair because that's not, that, that's like triggering. It makes you more sad or makes you more anxious. Seeing a pile of hair in front of you though is like, gosh, that's how much hair I ripped out of my head today. It just, it just brings things into light for people. You're not just doing it to do it. It's, it's not becoming, it's not just like a, like a habit that you're repeating. It's, I'm doing this, I have to put my hair in a jar or I have to put it in a pile or whatever. And then you see kind of what it looks like, okay? They also talked about her triggers, but which I tell you guys, it's so important to know your triggers. People try and tell me they don't have triggers. I don't believe you, okay? I just don't. <laughs> um, and her emotions after um, hair pulling. And then they also did something that was like actually changing the chemistry in her brain. So if she wanted to pull, they challenged her to delay the pull as long as possible. This is changing neural pathways in your brain because they're so used to you pulling. Just when you want to, you just pull it out. Well, when you, when you, force yourself, sorry, when you force yourself to not do what you want to do, it's changing your brain. It's allowing your brain to make new connections. You're just getting a new understanding of like, okay, I don't want to do this. This isn't something that I should be doing. She would just challenge herself every single time. Like, I, I will wait X amount of minutes or until I just can't breathe anymore, then I will pull it out. Um, it also, something that I want you guys to know is that it gets worse before it gets better. So if you think, counseling is always like this. It's like, you're here, okay? You're at your highest peak that you've been or pretty close to that. And you're like, oh, counseling's gonna make me better. I'm gonna go all the way back down to this normal baseline where I should be with all the other people or with people that have anxiety disorder or whatever. That's not how it works. Counseling is like this. It's like this. There is relapses and it's not, a relapse isn't just for like a, a substance use disorder. Like a re, it, you relapse your behaviors no matter what, if you're stuck in something, you're going to relapse. If you don't, props to you. But I'm just saying, don't ever doubt yourself just because you relapse. You can start over. I know it's a lot of work. I know it sounds scary. I know it's hard, but you can do it. Counseling isn't, oh, everything's better. I'm fine. It's, I'm at my worst. I'm going to go down. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to go down. I'm going to come back up. And it's, it's, a journey. It's your life. Change does not happen overnight. I will say it and say it and say it and say it until I'm blue in my face. Don't ever feel like you, you're you not good enough or you can't do something just because you don't change after a day, a week, a month, a year, a couple years. It's just, it takes time. You have to have faith in yourself and you cannot give up. When people come into counseling or bring ki their kids to day treatment and they say, my kid's not better in a, a month, two months, Please, honey, it does not take a month, two months, even sometimes a year to get your kid out of the intertwined crazy trauma that they've been through. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. They also had this girl make goals um, and, like, keep a copy in her purse and a like tape it to her wall or something and keep it at work they just she always had it with her so that it was always in front of her she could always see it and it wasn't just I'm gonna write this down and blah then it's gone um 
they did take out some things that were triggers for her. So, like, her mirrors in her house were triggers for her, I guess. Because she was seeing, like, how much hair she was ripping out. And it would just cause a lot of anxiety for her. Um, and also, they so she would carry, like, um, actual tangible skills in her hands. So, she would also have, like, a stress ball or... Gosh, I'm trying to think of some of the things that my kids use. Stress ball, fidget spinner. There's this cool thing that you can, like, put your hand in and it, like... I don't know how to explain it, but these little plastic pokers, like, form your hand, and you, if you look over top of the plastic box, then you can see your hand in the plastic pokers. I don't have a name for it. Um, there's also, I know it sounds crazy, but, like, you can bring, like, slime or putty or sand in a little jar wherever you're going. If you can keep it in your purse or your or your car and and bring it into the places that you go you can have it with you you know my kids have um those fidget cubes um i'm trying to think of some other things and and it's not going to look normal to everyone but would you rather be ripping the hair out of your head or playing with a fidget cube i don't know it, it's up to you it's your choice but that's just an option so these are all things that you can replace this behavior with or that you can slowly over time begin to change it. It's not always going to work. I I've many a times, obviously it doesn't always, always work. Sometimes I'm like, I just need to get this out. I need to just rip this skin off and then I'll sit on my hands. Don't chew. Don't chew. Whew. There's one more thing. So... I do want to teach you the progressive muscle relaxation, but there's one skill that I want to teach you guys right now, right here, for anxiety. I think this is the best thing I've ever, ever, ever learned. I thought, oh, this is, pfft, that's rubbish, it's not going to work. Counseling can be a crack sometimes, like, or a crack. Counseling can be a crack sometimes. I... I've started to learn if I tell a client to do something, I should do it on my own. Because if I don't think and I don't believe that things are going to work, why would my clients ever? I'm not saying that I would be like, ah, I, w I did this and it worked for my anxiety. I'm just saying, like, that's something that I feel like is so necessary for a counselor to do is to know yourself and know your triggers and know what works for you if you're ever going to be preaching things. So this is my favorite thing in the whole world when I'm very anxious and I mean like very anxious not just like thinking about a test or studying like when I'm crying because I'm so anxious I I use this and I love it I promise you wherever you are it doesn't matter find five things you can see and sometimes it helps to draw out the the details of this thing like that's what I love to do oh this is bumpy like this is smooth and you don't have to touch it you just see oh my gosh my cat always scares me you just see it. You just see them. You, you just draw out the details, draw out the colors, whatever you can bring out of something that you're looking at. The next thing, four things you can touch. So for example, one thing that I can touch is right here. You can feel without touching with your hands, your clothes on your body if you think about it. The carpeting, the walls, a pen, paper, Anything, anything that you can touch. You could touch your fingernail, you could touch your skin, you could touch your ring on your finger, whatever. Three things that you can hear, okay? It starts to get trickier towards the end. You really, really have to be zoned into what's happening around you to the here and now to bring yourself from that super anxious level down to a baseline of, gosh, now I can think through. So it gets harder and harder. You really have to pay attention. Three things that you can hear. I can hear my grandparents talking downstairs. I can hear the air conditioner flowing. And I can hear the dryer. You don't know what's going on around you until you're in the here and now. Two things that you can taste. No. Two things that you can smell, which is also hard. Sometimes you have to put a little work into it. I can smell that. I can smell that. Sometimes there's something in the air that's a good aroma. And then one thing that you can taste. Mine is always just like horrible breath or what I just ate. <laughs> but I mean, if you could put something in your mouth, like gum, or if you have a snack in front of you, that's a great way to do it too. I, I really, truly believe that that skill takes you from that heightened 
level of anxiety down to a normal baseline. You're down back to where you can say, okay, now my anxiety is still there, but I can breathe, I can think, I can focus, and I can figure out how I'm going to solve this problem or what I need to do next. It's not an end-all be-all, but it's a great skill to have to start somewhere. And that's what I want to leave you guys with. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. I will add more things, more replacement behaviors as we go along. Yay! Bye! <laughs>